What's up, Fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to Hi Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today I have my first podcast episode of 2022 for you. I have a couple of finished objects, a couple of whips, some spinning, and my last video that I posted was my 2022 knitting plans, which I definitely encourage you to watch. Uh, and I have a couple of acquisitions associated with the projects that I talk about there. So before I get started, I just want to remind you, because I know a lot of us were pretty busy over the last month with gift knits or smaller knits and like festive crafts and activities. Uh, so I haven't talked about this in a minute, but Kendra from The Balanced Skein and I are still running the Safe for Work make along on Instagram and Discord. So just for a refresh, or if you're new here, the Safe for Work make along is any adult sized garment, any craft, so it can be knitting, crochet, sewing, other crafts, if you can make garments through them, um, that is just appropriate for your lifestyle. This could be your work life, your home life, your current job, manifesting your dream job, um, something that you want to wear after work because it's cozy and comforting if you have very specific work attire that you need to wear, like nurses wearing scrubs, for example, or business casual type of situations. So safe for work make along. Uh, we're doing the finished object channel on Discord, so I'll be sure to link all of that information down below, as well as all of Kendra's accounts. And you have until March 31st of 2022, so still more than two months to jump in and get involved with us. We're having so much fun seeing all of the finished objects, uh, and I'm super excited to be exposed to new creators and new patterns. It's just a great time. If you also want to join in on Instagram, you can use the hashtag SafeForWork, M-A-L, Again, all this information is going to be down below. These two finished objects have been in some videos. I did post vlogs over the month of December, but I know the knitting community was totally inundated with a bunch of really exciting and festive content. And so I think there's probably a lot of folks who haven't seen me talk about these yet, and I love them and I've been wearing them so much. So I'm going to share them again but I will try to make it brief for folks who have seen these before, but we'll see. I'm Brevity is not my strong suit. So the first finished object I want to share with you today is my two by two ribbed hat. And this is knit in Malabrigo Rios in the color Potion. So I did self draft this pattern and it's something that I've been working on for a few months now because I did knit three two by two rib hats prior to working on this one. Those were all fingering weight held with mohair or an alpaca silk. And this is just, I believe Malabrigo Rios is super wash. It feels kind of super wash to me and I would argue it's got like the really incredible stitch definition of superwash. Uh, but I knitted on the same size needles and used what I'd learned from the other hats to, to make this one work. Now, this is a self-drafted pattern, but it is inspired by Petite Knit's hipster hat. And I believe there's also a free pattern called two by two rib on Ravelry already. And I'll link both of those down below. Um, I won't be creating or sharing my own pattern for this just to respect those creators. But this is what the hat looks like. Even though I made tweaks from my original pattern, I still ended up with a little bit of a nup, I guess, at the top of the hat. And if I try it on, if I pull it down onto my head, it's kind of like a watch cap style, I suppose. You can't really see it, but sometimes it like will slide up my head and then you get sort of that little nup situation. 
but that's okay. I love this hat. I picked this colorway specifically because it goes well with, I think, my skin tone, but it also matches things in my wardrobe decently well, uh, especially my winter coats, um, which is super important to me to be able to, to match things with other things in my wardrobe in the spirit of, of utility, once again. So this is my two by two ribbed hat with the Malabrigo Rios yarn. I love it. I've worn it pretty much every time I have been outside since I finished it. And I can't say enough good things. If you haven't knit yourself a two by two rib hat, I would consider it a total staple if you do wear hats. The next finished object I have to share with you is a pair of vanilla socks. And I feel like this yarn has been on a journey with us on the High Fiber Knits Instagram and YouTube channel. So these are the socks. And this yarn is, I should move my lamp. That's probably adjusting how things look. Yeah, that's much better. This is Chateau dyed by Color of My Fiber, who is on Etsy on MCN or Merino Cashmere Nylon Sock Base. Now, Barbara did send this yarn to me as a gift to share with you on my channels. Um, and I am just so grateful that she did because these are the most luxurious pair of socks I have ever, well, I've ever knit. I've only knit two and a half pairs of socks um, and just ever really worn. I love the cashmere, the density of the fabric. I knit them on 2.25 millimeter nine inch circulars one at a time and I'm just obsessed so I'll be sure to include the footage here I showed you the yarn in the skein and then I opened up the skein and showed you all the incredible speckle work on the fiber and then I showed you a swatch and so I'm just really happy to be able to show you a finished sock now and I'm gonna show you again just like this fruity pebble deliciousness the way the speckles landed I think is absolutely gorgeous. I did follow the Crazy Sock Lady 9 inch circular top down vanilla sock tutorial on YouTube. I did 20 stitches of 2 by one ribbing and then I knit down 50 rows. I did an increase right before the heel to get me to 64 stitches just because I thought that would help keep the legs snug. Um, I do have really muscular calves but then quite a slender ankle and narrow foot even though my foot's long like I'm a size 10 so it is like a 10 inch foot but but it's narrow. So I did my increase right before the heel thinking that would help. I just did a simple slip stitch heel heel turn and then I did the gusset and following the gusset, I did 63 rows before my toe decreases. I did make a mistake with the toe decreases. I waited a little bit too long to switch from a decrease row and a knit row to just decrease rows. So I ended up with a super pointy toe. Um, but I have worn these a handful of times, at least five or six times already, and it makes them fit a little bit more slouchy, but it's not something that I would say is a nuisance or anything like that. So these are my second pair of hand knit socks, and I am definitely converted. I love knitting socks more than I expected to. I don't typically have trouble with like motivation for things so second sock syndrome hasn't really been too much of a problem for me yet but that being said I have only really knit socks while I'm not too busy like not much going on with school or work or anything to like interfere with my motivation or compete for my attention so we'll see we'll see what happens as I continue my sock knitting journey that might change. So that's the second finished object. 
So now moving on to whips, the first thing that I want to share with you is my spinning. So in the vlogs that I posted over December, um, I had gone to get my graduation photos for my master's program taken. And I thought to myself, like, it was a long commute to the studio. And I was like, I should see if there's any yarn stores nearby. Lo and behold, Knitomatic was only a 15 minute walk from where I was. So I headed on over there and looked around and that store had the biggest selection of drops that I've seen in Toronto, like hands down, a really affordable and pretty diverse section uh, or selection of yarns. But I asked the owner if she had any drop spindles because I had seen some fiber on the wall uh, and she was like, yeah, I actually just restocked them. So I purchased an Estelle drop spindle in Beechwood and a 50 gram, like, I don't know what the proper term is, but it was twisted up like a skein. I just got like a 50 gram bundle of fiber. And this is what I have so far. So I'll tell you about the fiber first. This is Merino Silver, dyed in the colorway Topaz by Fleece Artist, uh, which is a hand dyer on the East Coast of Canada. So I love supporting Canadian creators when, when I can. It's often more affordable for me. Um, and it just, it feels extra special. So that's the fiber. And I was told by a subscriber who commented on the vlog that Merino is a really slippery fiber to start spinning with compared to like, I believe a Corydale or a BFL. So there's definitely a massive learning curve and I can put some footage here again. My first attempt was a big yikes. Um, there was a lot of thick and thin happening and I couldn't get good spin into the thicker areas because I kept letting my spin enter the drafting triangle. So it took about three sessions of practice for me to feel like I was relatively consistent at drafting thin. Um, and then another, another one or two sessions of, of spinning before I had decided that I had actually figured out how to spin properly um, and felt like, oh, it wasn't just like I was lucky during that session or something. Like I could repeat what I had done. And so you can see that I have got like a somewhat consistent, like definitely some thicker spots, but it is somewhat consistent and pretty thin single happening here. And I'm really proud of myself. I'm very excited. I think one of the game changers for me with being able to draft consistently and thinly was stripping my like big long rope I guess, of fiber into much thinner, um, I think this might be referred to as pencil roving, but working with much thinner strips, um, I think has been a really good strategy for me to get consistent drafting. So I would definitely recommend that for any novice spinners. Um, I, it also made it easier for me because I could work through a thinner strip a bit faster. Um, I didn't feel like I had to sit at my chair spinning for, for so long, like I could work through a smaller strip in about 20 or 30 minutes uh, and be satisfied with the progress that I'd made. So this is my spinning. Very happy about it. Definitely want to finish this up so I can ply it into a two-ply um, I think that will be appropriate, especially for my first time spinning, just to blend the thicker areas into the more nicely spun areas. 
I will say I've also found that once I figured out how to draft thinner and more evenly, having the appropriate amount of spin go into the yarn became a lot easier. And so please let me know in the comments down below. What I'm currently doing right now is spinning, parking, drafting and going up until I've lost all of my spin. And then I spin it again to add a little bit more twist so that when it goes together, it like spirals into like a nice two ply. And then I'm winding it onto the, onto the spindle. I don't know if it's like the right way to do it, but it kind of like feels like the right and satisfying way to do it when I get that nice little twist. So I'll again insert some footage here if I haven't already of, of what that looks like or what I mean. Um, I have been documenting more consistently my spinning journey on my Instagram, which is high fiber underscore knits. So you can follow along with this over there. So other whips. I have another vanilla sock on my needle and this is another color of my fiber yarn from Barbara which was gifted to me. This is 70% merino, 20% nylon, and 10% stellina dyed in the colorway night sky. And I actually think this might be my favorite one that I have knit from Color of My Fiber so far, just because I love, it's like variegated, but I guess this is more closer to a tonal than like a speckle or, um, sorry for the truck passing by, more of a tonal than a speckle or um, like a true variegated yarn, I suppose. I really like how moody it is. I think with the Stellina, um, it's very aptly named as Night Sky. It kind of reminds me of Starry Night by Van Gogh, even though there's no yellow. That's sort of the vibe I get. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this, well, of course, because it's a whip, but I also wanted to comment on uh, the way that I'm knitting these because I decided to try a 60 stitch sock because I said I have such a narrow ankle and foot. I'm hoping that doing a 60 stitch instead of a 64 will give me like the tight snug fit that I'm really looking for. And I will say I don't think the other socks I've knit 64 stitches don't fit me. I think I just feel more comfortable with tighter fitting things. I grew up dancing, always wearing like tights and leotards and leggings and tightly fitting tank tops and shorts and all of that. Um, and so I just, I feel most secure, I suppose, when I'm wearing something close to my body. So I'm doing everything else pretty much the same except doing 60 stitches instead of 64, but still same number of rows, still same techniques and everything. Um, I'm almost, I'm just a little past halfway down the foot before I can do the toe decreases. So that is my first whip of 2022. I'm interested to see how much dye is going to come out of the yarn when I give it its first block because it is very saturated um, and it could have been my mind playing tricks on me, but I feel like the first time I picked up the yarn I was seeing some like blue tint on my thumb after knitting. so. So yeah, I'm curious to see how much if any is going to come out of this when it's blocked. That's whip number one. So my second whip is going to be a camisole number two, and it's it's really not much right now, but I want to just share my thoughts on, on what's happening with this right now. And if you've been here for a while, like since the summer when I started this channel, you'll know that I have knit two of these. Uh, the first I knit in Knitting for Olives Merino in Dusty Aqua, like the, the pattern calls for that yarn, and I made a lot of mistakes on that. Um, 
and it was too short so I, I frogged it like all of the rows of ribbing ended up being shifted so there was like a weird looking break or like like a frame shift I guess uh, and it looked weird and I wasn't wearing it so I frogged it and then I made a silver one in Lion Brand's Kobu which is half cotton half bamboo uh, the same size size medium because um, I just wanted another one but that yarn is like a heavy DK even bordering on heavier than that like a size four so because the yarn was thicker and because cotton and bamboo aren't elastic in the same way that wool is that one came out pretty big um and bagged out a bit so i really just mostly wear that one as pajamas now however i had three balls of this holstgarn super soft and this is in the colorway truffle which is like a a brown marled with blue uh, and purple and i think you can see that coming off on camera I had originally purchased these for camisole number five, but I got something else for that in my acquisitions and I decided not to commit to two camisole number fives just yet. So uh, I thought that because I haven't finished a garment in such a long time, maybe I'd ease back into it with a familiar pattern. Yeah, and so this is what I have so far for the camisole number two buy my favorite things knitwear. Now, I don't know if I'm remembering when I knit my first one with the knitting for olive like correctly, but I will say this fabric is looking a little bit more gapey or like a looser gauge than I think the merino from knitting for olive had turned out. Uh, that said, the whole scarn does have a looser twist than Knitting for Olive's Merino, and I know from knitting with this yarn in two other garments, my Stockholm v-neck sweater, which I'm wearing today, um, and my Monica Gellerty by Sari Nordland, it does have a pretty decent bloom when it blocks. So I hope it'll turn out okay. Frogging is always an option upon finishing or even before I finish the garment. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But I do think this is a really good colored yarn for this project just to have like a nice neutral staple tank top. Um, I do enjoy the camisole number two pattern and fit. So yeah, this is what we're working on. Not much else to say about that. Uh, I guess I actually will say if, if it turns out that this yarn is too thin, I could always hold it double, although that might mean I have to knit a different size. Or if I wanted to purchase new needles, I could drop down a needle size, but I'm gonna trust that this will work out for now because everything else has worked out kind of luckily for me so far. Okay, and so we've made it to acquisitions, and I totally understand if acquisitions aren't your vibe, uh, you're welcome to watch another video now. Um, and you'll probably see these again in the future when I actually work them up, so that's totally okay. Uh, but I am gonna talk about a couple things I picked up recently. So for Boxing Day, I knew I was going to purchase the yarn for camisole number five because the Knitting Loft had 20% off everything. Uh, and I knew I wanted the Knitting for Olive Merino for this project. So in my 2022 knitting plans, I talked about how green for me is a wardrobe staple, even if not a neutral. So I picked the color Dusty Sea Green by Knitting for Olive in their merino and I was expecting this to be a bit lighter based on the photo online but the tone is accurate and I like that it pulls gray without being too cool or like jewel toned um, and it doesn't pull too warm so that it looks like 
army green. Um, I really appreciate like the accuracy of knitting for Olive's colorway names. So this is the yarn that I have picked for my camisole number five. And I hope that this will be cast on shortly after I finish the camisole number two, but I'm trying not to rush myself with my knitting this year. Also in my 2022 knitting plans video, I talked about wanting to try more sock styles. I specifically referred to ribbed socks a la Andrea Mowry's DRK Everyday Socks, um, and I also talked about Lini Hoy's Y Socks. So upon a little bit of further investigation and with the help of one of my knitting friends, Rachel from Night Sky Knits, uh, I found some free ribbed sock patterns that I might opt to use instead. Um, and uh, those patterns are, what are they? I think one of them is called the Vanilla Latte Sock, but I'll link both of the patterns she recommended to me down below. Um, so yeah, there's some free ribbed sock patterns that I might try instead, or I think I I understand sock construction well enough that I could attempt to do a ribbed sock myself without a pattern, um, just modifying my, my basic vanilla sock formula. Uh, and then I also further inspected the Y sock pattern, like, picture and realized it looks like a lot more purling than I think I want to do for a sock. So I'm still on the hunt for more sock patterns. Um, one that I really like that I have encountered recently is another sock pattern by Lini Hoy and they're the Koigu sock, uh, as well as the Rumpelstiltskin sock from Very Busy Monkey. I just think those ones are absolutely gorgeous looking. Uh, but I also have the 250 Japanese Knitting Stitches book by Hitomi Shida on loan from my local library right now, and I definitely think that I could fit one of those charts into a vanilla sock pattern with some modifications and some math just for like a unique pair of self-drafted socks. Anyway, I realized that to be doing more socks, it would be wise to get a fixed pair of circular needles for sock knitting. So when I went to the knitting loft to pick up my knitting for Olive, I also decided to get a pair of the Licka these are the indigo wooden needles and this is uh, on a 40 inch, this is 40 inches long. So this should be good for knitting socks, magic loop, toe up, two at a time. Um, I have more options now. I did get two millimeters uh, because my nine inch circulars that my night sky sock is currently on, those are 2.25 uh, millimeters. And I'm thinking that if the 60 stitches doesn't turn out to be like the fit that I'm looking for, maybe 64 stitches, but on a quarter millimeter smaller will make a difference. I'm not sure. I just thought it was logical to get a different size than what I already own. So I'm very pleased to have these. My interchangeable needle set is Lika, and I also have the three millimeter and the 3.5 millimeter fixed needles from Lika that I absolutely love. So I, I trust that, that these will serve me pretty well. Uh, I also picked up a couple of new sock yarns to try. Um, so for context, I was looking at Twisted Willow yarn, which is a wool and linen blend. And I asked the people at the Knitting Loft if that would be appropriate for sock yarn, because I know linen is super strong, but it has zero elasticity. So it's not great for like getting the fit that you want for socks. Um, and Twisted Willow is also a single ply, which 
Um, I've learned that you want high twist also for durability and strength in your sock yarn. So uh, I started talking with the people at the Knitting Loft about uh, polyamide or, or nylon plastic free sock yarns. And she showed me a few, but what I landed on is Retrosaria Mondim by Rosa Pamar. And this is like one of those, if you know, you know, if you don't, now you know situations. From what I heard, this is the nylon free sock yarn to be all other nylon free sock yarns. Um, the yarn is made from 100% Portuguese wool and it's named after a village in Portugal that was known for its sock knitting industry. Uh, so this yarn is like, I guess, really inspired by like that, that history or the heritage um, and tries to reflect like the authenticity of that craft. So I picked up these two colors and I'll tell you a little bit about the yarn. It is a fingering weight. It's a, it's a sock yarn. It's meant for socks, even though there is no nylon in it. Again, it's 100% wool. And in the 100 gram ball, you get 421 yards or 385 meters, which, which is a pretty standard quantity. Uh, it is a three ply and it does have, if you can see, I don't know how well it will focus. It does have a really good amount of twist in it. Uh, it feels like, it doesn't feel as squeaky and smooth as the Superwash or the, the sock yarns that I have worked with from Color of My Fiber, uh, but it doesn't feel like rustic or rough in the same way that the Holstgarn does before it's blocked. But it does have like a toothiness or like a wooly feeling to it. And so I, I really like the way this feels like in my hands. Um, I will also say that these types of balls are my favorite put up. Well, I like, I love skeins. Everybody loves looking at skeins because they're just exquisite. But what I like about this type of pull up, uh, put up is the, um, just like the density of the ball, uh, it, it, it excites me a lot. So I picked up the two colors, the, the marled color, this is probably going to be a pair of ribbed socks for my boyfriend for in the house. And he is very, he's not super hard wearing on his clothes, but he wears things until they are literally threadbare. Uh, he, he loves like wearing and things like that. So a pair of socks in this yarn for him will probably be like a true test of its durability. This is color 400 and it's a marl of a creamy strand and more of like a, a tan strand. And then I have the red color, and this is color 111, uh, and this is going to be for a pair of socks for myself. Um, if not the rumple stilt skin, it will probably be like whatever lacy Japanese knitting stitch self-drafted sock I attempt to do, because I think those will really shine with the solid yarn. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to share with you today. I enjoyed sitting down to film a podcast because it's been a minute since I've done that. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I have on my needles, uh, as well as my spindle and my docket. <laughs> um, yeah, so please do subscribe, comment down below, like follow me on Instagram, send me an email. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. And until then, I wish you health, happy knitting, and happy new year. Bye, everyone.